Okay, so welcome back to this next video on uh, the GQ pathway and um, calcium signalling. So, we're about to discuss the different types of calcium signalling that can be given rise to uh, by uh, stimulating a cell uh, with this GQ pathway, stimulating this GQ pathway within cells. Okay, so the first type then is what is known as a calcium blip. Okay, and this is basically where you stimulate the GQ pathway very locally and hardly at all, really. So it's called a calcium blip. So imagine only prov only stimulating very few uh, uh, of these G protein coupled receptors. Now, if you stimulate very few of them, you will get a very small and local increase in IP3. So you will get only a very small number of these IP3 receptors actually binding four IP3 molecules and going into a state where calcium will stimulate it. So basically what happens is if I draw the endoplasmic reticulum here, you end up with most of the IP3 receptors not having um, IP3 bound to them. And therefore, they have inhibitory calcium binding sites uh, on their um, uh, cytosolic surfaces, basically. So this is an inactive IP3 receptor. It's not primed. It doesn't have IP3 bound to it. Right, and then because you have stimulated the GPCR a tiny bit, so this, this comes from a tiny and local uh, stimulation of the GPCR. So what do I mean by local? Well, what I mean is if this is the cell here, the cell uh, will be covered in these GPCRs. So the GPCRs will be all over the place, okay? Now, you can either bathe the entire cell in the ligand, in which case the GPCRs all over the cell are going to be activated, or you could just put a tiny surface of the cell in the ligand, basically. So that's what I mean by a local exposure to uh, the ligand, basically, just exposing a little bit of the surface of the cell. So you've got a tiny and local increase in IP3. So IP3 is going to increase locally where this uh, GPCR was activated. So what happens is that maybe one IP3 receptor ends up with three, uh, sorry, with four IP3 molecules bound to it. All the others have maybe only got three or two or one or zero IP3 molecules bound to it. But occasionally you'll have one that actually does have four IP3 molecule, molecules bound to it. Now what will happen is that it will have um, it will have calcium stimulatory binding sites. So I'll show these. So let's say this is a calcium stimulatory binding site. A cal there are the four calcium stimulatory binding sites. And now if calcium binds to there, let's just say some calcium in this cytosol is happens just to bind to all four of these. Well, you're, you're obviously not the same calcium ion. You'll need four calcium ions to come in and bind to these stimulate calcium stimulatory binding sites. And if that happens, what's going to happen is this IP3 receptor is going to open. Now, it's going to let out some calcium into uh, from the endoplasmic reticulum. So calcium comes out and you get this sort of local rise in calcium. And that tiny little local rise in calcium is what is known as a calcium blip. Okay, so that's what's known as calcium blip. This local rise in calcium around a single IP3 receptor that has opened. It's basically a single, it's the rise in calcium caused by the opening of a single IP3 receptor. Rise in calcium caused by opening a single IP3 receptor. Caused by opening a single IP3 receptor. Okay, right. Goodness, that's a lot of writing. IP3 receptor. Right, okay. So, what is going to happen when you do this? Uh, well, the calcium is going to diffuse out, you know. You're going to get some calcium diffusing onto these neighbouring IP3 receptors. But these neighbouring IP3 receptors don't have four IP3 molecules bound to them. So they have 
inhibitory calcium binding sites exposed. So calcium binds to the inhibitory calcium binding sites and is going to inhibit its neighbours, basically. So you're not going to get uh, a propagation of activation of IP3 receptors like in a calcium wave. Instead, what's going to happen is you're going to have lateral inhibition, effectively. It's going to inhibit its neighbours, basically. So calcium is going to go over here and inhibit this IP3 receptor. And similarly, on this side over here, so you only get a single IP3 receptor opening, basically. Okay, and um, you see these tiny little local rises in calcium. Okay, so um, that's what's known as a calcium blip, and it will be caused by tiny little rises in IP3 that are very, very localized, basically. So you're not getting IP3 going up in the entire cell. You're only getting it going up in a tiny bit and for transient amount of time, potentially. And what will happen to this IP3 receptor is that it will release a bit of calcium. You'll get very, very high calcium concentration around this IP3 receptor. And then when the calcium concentration starts to build up, if the calcium concentration around the IP3 receptor gets too high, which it will eventually, then calcium goes from being stimulatory on the IP3 receptor to suddenly inhibiting it. When that calcium, so I'll repeat that, when calcium gets too high around an IP3 receptor, it inhibits it, no matter what. Even if it's got four IP3 molecules attached to it, it still inhibits it. If calcium concentration gets too high, it inhibits the IP3 receptor. So the IP3 receptor will get inhibited and then it will stop conducting calcium. Okay, so you get a tiny little local rise in calcium around the IP3 receptor that opened. And that is what is known as a calcium blip. Okay. So now let's look at the second type of calcium uh, signal that can, ri give, that can be given rise to from, um, from uh, the GQ pathway. And this is called a uh, calcium puff. Okay, right. So, in the case of a calcium puff, you get a slightly bigger... Um, you get a slightly bigger stimulation of the cell. So you're going to provide slightly more uh, ligand to a slightly larger area of the cell. And what will happen now is you'll get a region of IP3 receptors that are activated. Okay, so let's say this is a IP3 receptor here. And then you'll get a whole bunch of them, basically, in this nearby sort of um, region of the cell which are all being activated because uh, the um, G protein coupled receptor in the vicinity of them has been activated. So let's draw a bunch of G protein coupled receptors near these that have been activated. So you don't get global ri uh, rise in IP3 in the cell, but you get, you know, a reasonable portion of the cell has now got IP3. So it's a bigger signal than gave rise to a calcium blip, but it's not a global signal yet. It's not whole cell. So by global, I mean whole cell. It's not that the IP3 is going up in the entire cell cytoplasm. So, what happens is you get a whole bunch of IP3 receptors which have all got IP3 bound to them. So, four IP3 molecules are bound to them. But, then outside of this bunch that have all been activated, there are then some that haven't. So, it ends, basically. You don't have all the IP3 receptors in the cell bound to four IP3. You just have it locally. More local, uh, sorry, more spread out um, bigger basically than in a case of a calcium blip, but not not whole cell yet. You haven't got every single IP3 receptor bound to IP3. You've got a bunch of them uh, bound to IP3. So these ones are all primed and ready to go. They have IP3 bound and therefore they have these four activatory calcium binding sites here. Okay, so when uh, one of these Ha just happens to get four calcium molecules bound in these stimulatory calcium binding sites, then what will happen is that it will open, it will cause uh, calcium to be released, released from the ER, calcium will then go up rapidly in this portion of the cytoplasm here, it will spill over onto the others, and Calcium will therefore bind to the four, you know, you'll get four calciums bound to these four um, activatory calcium binding sites on these neighbours, on its neighbours, 
and that will cause them to activate, so you'll get more calcium release uh, through those IP3 receptors, so you get a larger sort of um, area of cytoplasm that um, has got a high calcium in. But when calcium then overflows onto the neighbours which don't have the IP3 bound to them, then these instead, because they don't have four IP3 molecules, they have uh, inhibitory calcium binding sites exposed and calcium will inhibit them, so you'll get lateral inhibition. So basically it's a similar concept to the calcium blip, but it's bigger basically. You've got more IP3 receptors actually being um, activated and releasing calcium into the cytoplasm. So you get a larger sort of calcium signal. You get a rise in calcium, uh, which will then fall eventually, but it's a bigger area, a bit, bigger volume of the cell that is undergoing this rise in calcium. And that's known as a calcium puff, basically. And a larger signal from um, the GPCRs would be required to produce it, basically. Okay. Uh, so, do I have anything more to say to that? Oh yes, how would it be terminated? Well, once the calcium again gets too high in the vicinity of these IP3 receptors, then it will go from being activatory to being inhibitory. So, too high calcium starts to inhibit these IP3 receptors and therefore stops them from releasing further calcium. And that would stop the calcium puff. That would end it. What well, would end the... Um, increasing, uh, it would end the s increasing supply in calcium. Okay, so uh, that's the calcium puff, and in the next video we'll discuss the major type, which is the global type, uh, whole cell type, which is the calcium wave, which we have discussed in previous videos, but we'll go over again.